Hello everybody, I'm Brian Collins, Realtor, Listed Group, California, and today we're going to talk about live streaming and hosting your own Zoom call. Um, all the different features that are available will get you ready to do your own Zoom calls. Let's get started. All right, so here we are set up on our desktop. Um, I have the Zoom client installed. That's what this guy right here is. This is the Zoom client. Um, you can get that from zoom.us or zoom.com, either one works. Um, it'll be here and under resources, you click on download the Zoom client. So now I've logged into my account here so that I have um, my options open and we can kind of go over some of those things. But when you have your Zoom client downloaded, um, typically you want to log in, you want to create an account or create um, create a login. The, the free account is um, a perfectly acceptable uh, a type of account to have. Um, it does limit you to, um, I think, 100 participants um, on your Zoom calls and a 40-minute time limit on your, on your calls. Um, but for most people, 100 people and 40 minutes is usually about all you need. Um, if you want to sign up and you pay the, the monthly fee, which I believe is $14 a month, it's not that bad. You get unlimited meeting times and then you get up to 300 participants. Man, that is going to be really good for just about anybody. So what I really want to start off with was let's just set up a, a basic meeting um, and we can go over some of the other things, uh, some of the things in the meetings that we can do. Um, so once you have your client downloaded and you've um, logged in as yourself, you can um, see here there's two different options. There's a new meeting or there's join. So if you're trying to join a meeting, you can click this button here and it'll ask you for the meeting ID number. Um, and you have some options. You can name yourself. Um, you can name yourself there and then that way people know who you are. And um, you can not connect to audio and you can also turn off your video. So you'd just be able, to, basically if you did both of these here, you would just be listening um, listening and watching without any sort of participation. Um, if you'd like to do that and you just put in the meeting ID number and you'd get that typically from an invitation. And let's talk about invitations. If you were to start a meeting, hi, you can down here under participants right here, you get this option right here for invite. If you click invite, it gives you a couple different options. Here's some of the people that um, that are already built into my account. You can save contacts in your account if you want, but otherwise this is the easiest one. You can either send an email out with your default email um, program or you can use Gmail. And so if you copy the invite link here, this is just going to copy the actual invitation link and you can see what this looks like here, um, right here. So it's just the Zoom meeting plus the password here. Now, if you come over here to copy invitation, it's gonna copy this to your clipboard. So then um, now if you go over here, uh, let me see, if we go over here and we paste this, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to get all of the information. It's going to include call-in, dial-in numbers, and all this stuff. And these are for participants. So um, as a meeting host, you don't have to really worry about this. All this means is that people are going to show up right here in your participant list once they, once they get in there. Um, and so we'll take a look at that right now. Oh, the other option that you have is to create an email. And when it creates an email, if you click default, all it does is open up a brand new email with all of the stuff pasted into and then you can go in and, and copy and you can type in whoever you want to invite via email. Um, on the Mac, I have it set up so that I can access my messages on here. So, um, so when I am in here and I want to invite somebody, I can copy the invite link and then also I can open up, open up my messages and immediately send in a text message out to anybody I would like to invite. So those are different ways that you can invite people to your meeting. So I'm gonna go ahead and send myself a meeting invite right now so that I can show up on here and then we have a little bit extra controls. Okay, so one of the settings that I have in 
on my Zoom right now is that I have waiting room enabled. So this means that people can't just show up if I'm not ready. Um, you can access that right here in your uh, participants menu. You can enable the waiting room. What this means is that when someone is ready, they're going to get a, a message that looks very similar to this right here. And it says the, mess, the host will let you in soon and it gives them the name of the meeting. So there's a few things that you can do just in case you have enabled the waiting room. Um, you can, um, under the chat menu here, you can send a message to everybody in the waiting room and just say, hey, we'll be there in a second. So I can send that meeting to everybody in the waiting room. Now, if there's more than one pe people, if there's more than one person in there, um, you can see right here, I have a little chat icon now that will allow me, and then there it is. So now I have a chat that goes to everybody in the waiting room. So I'm like, okay, good. Uh, I'll, they'll be there in a second. All right, so we're going to get started. Uh, and then the person who's, people who are waiting can also uh, chat back. So let's go ahead and now I'm going to admit. Now if there are more than one person, you'd get a little button that says admit all. So if you have a bunch of people waiting, you can hit one button and it'll admit all of them. Otherwise, you just have to admit them as they come in. So now there's a lot of me going on. I've got me over here, I've got me over here, I've got me over here. Whew, it's, it's crazy. So now, um, this chat here, um, you can send a message to everyone in the meeting um, or just one person individually. So that's another way. If you just need to send something to somebody, um, you can send them one private message that um, you don't have to worry about. Um, be cognizant of that because if it's set to everyone, um, then you can, uh, you know, if, you, if you're trying to send a private message and then you end up sending it to everybody, it could be, uh, I don't know, embarrassing or disastrous, depending on what you're trying to say. I'd definitely say keep your messages professional while you're in a Zoom call for sure. Um, so here we have, let's see if we're going to send a message. Hello. Okay, so that's for me to everyone. Now, what's really nice is if you... On your, like someone participates, let's see if I can get the chat here, and he goes, actually, you know, I'm going to rename myself on here just so that I am, okay. So now I have renamed myself so that you can see it just says participant, and then I am the host. So I can chat to everyone on here, and I can just say, hi, that goes to everyone. Now what's, now let's say they, let's say participant said something inappropriate or whatever, you just click on the name, and when it clicks on the name, it changes this to uh, a private message. And you say, hey, relax. And that, you can see, goes to participant. Now, if I want to make send a message to everybody, I can click on this word, everyone, and now it changes to everyone again. Um, in the chat system, you are able to send files via um, any of these drive systems, um, OneDrive, Google Drive, Box, um, or any local... Um, file on your computer. I'm going to send, oops, I'm just going to send a picture real quick to everybody in the chat and now it'll upload and it'll be available. Anywho, so in the chat now um, you can direct your participants to raise their hand if they have a question. Um, in their menu down here you can see that there is a uh, the raise hand option they also have the yes, no, go, you know, slower, all that good stuff. They have those options. But if I, if participant raises their hand, you can see right here on the screen um, that the participant has raised their hand. It also shows up in this participant um, menu right here as well that they've raised their hand. Um, this comes in really, really handy when you want everybody to be quiet and maybe you want them to raise their hand if they have a question. There's, here's your options for that. Under the participant menu, you can mute everybody. And then it gives you a little pop-up that says, current and new participants will be muted. Allow participants to unmute themselves. You can uncheck that and then nobody can unmute themselves. So you don't have to worry about, there's no interruptions. Continue. And so now it says everybody will be muted. And um, I have my hand raised here. So I can lower that hand if I'm done. Okay. So now I'm muted here. Um, now you can see um, I, as a participant here, cannot unmute myself. 
It says you cannot unmute yourself as the host has muted all participants. So now I, um, under the participants menu, I can raise my hand. You can see that that's there. And then I, as the meeting host here, can unmute that person and say, hey, I would like to, I would like you to talk. When you click on the unmute, it does say on the screen here, it says the host would like to unmute your microphone. You can unmute now or stay muted. This is so that the host, you as the host, you cannot unmute somebody un unwittingly um, without them knowing. So I'm going to go ahead and stay muted. Um, but they can lower, th if they have their hand raised, maybe you can direct them to the chat to ask their question, or you can unmute them, and they can unmute themselves, and then um, they can ask their question. Then once again, you hit the mute all button, and then keep that button unchecked, and you can continue. Um, if you're in a more casual situation, you can allow people to unmute themselves. I personally usually keep that button um, checked, lets people unmute themselves. If they need to say something, I do ask that, that you know everybody keeps themselves muted until they have a question. Um, but that is what you could do. Or if you want to encourage general chat, you can just unmute all, and then it will say unmuted. All, all participants are unmuted. Um, and it's still, even unmute all, it still gives them the option to mute or unmuted. So again, I'm going to stay muted there. Um, some more options that you have, you can mute participants upon entry. That's a good one. And um, you can, again, it gives you the option to allow them to unmute themselves. So you can continue. Um, that means anybody who drops in after you started, they're going to come in muted and um, hopefully they won't be a distraction. Um, you can, he, from here, uncheck the allow participants to unmute themselves. If you want to hear a little chime, you know, the, when people come in and come out, um, there is, you know, that option that you can hear just a little ding dong, you know, when people walk in or when people come in. Um, you can allow people to rename themselves, which is really good, um, you know, if they want to change the name that is showing. You can lock a meeting, which means that nobody else can come in. You're, you're, you're done taking people in. Um, and you can enable or disable the waiting room. And if you disable that, then just people don't have to wait. You won't get a notification. They'll just drop in and drop out. Um, if, if you're doing a presentation or something like that, you may want to um, uncheck the enable waiting rooms just so that people aren't, you don't have to stop and um, keep an eye out. You have to keep an eye out on your participant um, little box in order to watch if people are dropping in or not. So. And then this merge to meeting window just means that um, it now merges the, that, that pop-up window to this guy. I can do the same thing with the chat here. I can merge to meeting window. And so now I have participant and chat. It's all in one window. Um, I like mine popped out because I have two screens. So I can, I can take those boxes and kind of put them off to the side so I can watch them, but they're not on screen. And they don't take up um, my screen real estate. Um, let's see. So again, this is, um, there's a couple different views here. When you have two people, this is the speaker view. Um, so you can see here, let me go ahead and unmute myself. So when I start talking here, now this is going to, it's going to battle it out because I have myself not muted. So here, let's try that. So you should be able to hear me now through my, my phone. And then because and it's going to show that I'm talking here on my phone now because this is the speaker view. Now you saw that little flash, that little bar that came up that says, hey, you're muted. The microphone is detecting noise, but you're not transmitting. So it, just in case you forget that you're muted, you'll get that little bar that pops up and it will remind you to unmute yourself in order to talk. Um, it's kind of hard when it's myself and, you know, me and all these different videos here uh, to really give you the full experience of what it's like. But um, a couple other options that you have, we've kind of covered participants in chat, and that's these are really great options, and these are the main controls that you're going to be using um, in these types of situations. Um, here's another one. Let's just say you want to see everybody talking at once. Um, so this right here, it's going to put the yellow, the green box around whoever is talking. So this this um, view right here is the gallery view. So if you had 15 people, you would see um, 
you know, three or five rows of three or three rows of five or something like that. Um, and even it will even go to like multiple screens if there's too many people. Um, and this way you get a you get an idea of what exactly everybody is doing. You can kind of keep an eye on in case somebody's like raising their hand or you know nodding yes or you know whatever when you're um, just just for the interaction. It's a little bit better to see everybody in this view here. So here's a few other options that you have as um, a participant. Um, you can there's a clap and a thumbs up so you can say hey everybody give me a thumbs up if you know you can hear me or something like that and then you'll see that everybody's little window will pop up with a um let me see if i yep here's a thumbs up there we go so you can see everybody's pops up with a little thumbs up or they might give you a little clap or something like that um those are under reactions and here's a couple of the some other uh, real basic functions here um your mute this is how you mute yourself um, you click that and it'll unmute yourself. You'll be able to see the notification that I'm muted now. Um, you'll be able to see that notification that pops up. Under this little menu here, you have options. So you can select a microphone or select a speaker. Um, you can test, switch, or you can leave the computer audio, or you can access your audio settings all from Zoom. Um, so I have my microphone is this little guy right here. Um, it's plugged into a mixer, so I have to use that microphone. And then my speaker system, I just use my, my computer audio. Um, but if I wanted to use my mixer, I could do that. Or my secondary monitor, I could use that. And I have a couple of multi-outputs here as well. Um, if you want to test your speaker microphone, you can do all of that stuff from here. And then the same thing kind of for video. You can stop your video. You can see that uh, my video has been stopped now. Uh, here's the speaker view. So this is what my video looks like. Um, when my speaker stopped. You can still hear me. I'm still muted, or I'm not muted, but you can still hear my voice or whatever, but um, it just goes to your default profile picture that you set up on the website. That's the picture that shows up there. Um, so we'll, we'll get into the website settings here as well. And then you have um, the options to choose your FaceTime, or choose which camera you want to use. I have the built-in one here and I also have another one but I'm using the other one for my face down here. You can also choose a virtual background so uh, depending on your camera quality and the lighting in your area you should be able to choose a virtual background. Um, when you choose when you get a virtual background I feel like there's the these three are the the, the ones that come standard. Um, you don't need a green screen or anything like that. Um, again your lighting needs to be pretty good for these. Um, and you can do that. And you can see there's a little bit of an area when you have, when you have, um, it's a little, it's a little messy. But if you're just talking and you're just, you know, just sitting there like this, I feel like it's really not that big of a deal. I have a bunch of ones that I like because I really like Superman. So um, I've got that guy, and then I've got this guy, uh, and then I have diff different ones for my work. And um, I've got, I've, you can see I've got a lot. I've downloaded all the Star Wars ones because those are really fun too. Now, if you do have a green screen set up, you can check this box, and then what it's going to do is, um, right now it's really weird, but you can choose this color, and you can say, oh, what color? It, obviously, your whole entire background should be one solid color. Even if you have a black screen or a white screen or a blue screen or whatever, like like if I choose blue, boop, I don't have anything else in my in my office that's this color. So you can see that it works pretty well if you just manually choose the color. Um, so now I'm basically a floating head. I think if I choose none, no. Um, yeah, so if I do something like this, like it, it remembers the last color you did. So you can see here that my shirt is now a green screen. And you have the ability, if you have a green screen um, behind you, you can just pick the color that you want and it'll manually detect that color. You can see up here that there is some blue, as the blue shifts in and out of this color here, you'll see the, um, you'll see my, my pictures drop out too. Anyway, so I choose not to have a green screen and it, it works, it works fairly well. Um, normally I'll have, you know, a little bit more light this way, but, um, and you also have the option and typically this is set to default here, um, this mirror my video. So you'll want to check out if you're, if you're doing this, um, you can see how my logo is backwards now. Um, you can just uncheck that and it will, even the background goes mirror as well. So 
just be aware that that is what you have available. Let's go back to none. There we go. Okay, so that's a lot of fun. Um, here's a couple things. Now, let's just say you, you want to record your video. You want to record this meeting just so that you have the option, you know, to maybe replay it later. You want to post it somewhere. Um, you want to do a tutorial, whatever it is. Um, in your settings here, you can click on record. Now, for me, it's already set up here to record locally. I'm going to go ahead and just stop that recording. Um, and it says the recorded file will be converted to MP4 when the meeting ends. So it won't do anything while the meeting is going. It's got to be done. It's going to get done afterwards. Um, so you have to wait until you're done with your meeting in order to do that. If you just record for just a second, whatever, then um, when your meeting ends, it will convert and record that. The, where you get to your record settings is going to be in your Zoom settings online. Your Zoom setting online, um, there's two different types. There's cloud recordings and, lo and local recordings. So cloud recordings um, upload to the Zoom cloud. If you want those there, that's a paid feature. Um, local recordings, though, you can just record locally to your computer. Um, and then you can go into your settings. And it says right here under recording, local recording, allow the host and participants to record meeting to a local file. So you want to click on that. Um, and then for me, I don't allow the participants to record um, my meetings. So I uncheck that one. Um, I don't have cloud recording or automatic recording started. I want to be able to control that. So that's what we're doing. That's where you find your, under your Zoom, you go into your profile, whatever, and go into settings, click on recording, and then local recording, make sure that's enabled. So you'll have, you'll be able to record whatever it is that you are, you know, the audio that you're record that you're saying and whatever your screen capture, all that good stuff. Um, and now here's another, here's another real basic feature that um, almost everybody is going to want at some point. Um, you're going to want to share your screen. So let's say that I want to record, I want to share my screen here. Um, so the options, you can use the little arrow button here. These are the options. Um, you can allow yourself, only yourself, or anybody who's participating to share their screen. Um, and then when you have all participants, it says who can share when someone else is sharing, um, only the host. So if somebody else is, if my participant over here is sharing their screen, I could interrupt their share and, and share my screen. Um, otherwise, you could check this button and anybody can interrupt and share their screen. So um, typically, though, just the host, you are going to be sharing your screen. You're not really going to have a lot of other people wanting to share their screen unless you are providing some sort of, um, unless you're providing some sort of a, a like customer service type thing. You need to, um, you know, see what they're seeing. You're, you're helping somebody, that sort of thing. Then you might want to have them share their screen. So that would be a good idea. I do lots of one-on-one -on -one calls um, with agents who are trying to set up their website and do things. So I can, I can allow them to share their screen so that I can see what they're looking at and I can help them better. Um, but anywho, so what you're going to get is this share screen option. You're going to see here, this pops up. You'll have desktop one, desktop two. There's a whiteboard. You can share your iPhone or iPad via a cable or via AirPlay. Um, I, I like this feature here. This works out really well for me specifically. Um, I've been able to do that. Or any window that you have open should pop up here. So if you just want to share, you know, your Chrome screen, you can hit share. And now your view changes. Here you can see that we're, all the people are floating and I can still change gallery view, um, just speaker view, or no view at all. Um, but I can put that up here or I can drag it to my second screen, which I like to do, and then it gets out of the way. Um, so I don't need to worry about that. But now you can see that my whole entire that my whole entire um, screen is being shared. And if you look at my, on my participant here, you can see all they can see is my screen. So this is 
uh, a few things that I've had to figure out on my own here. Um, when this is when this is floating here in your in your screen, um, the people on the other end they can't see that. They have a little window up here where they can see you. Oops. <clears throat> up here in this top corner, that's that's the video that they can see of you talking. Um, so if you move that little the little floating video out of the way, it doesn't impede anybody watching. They can still see your face and they can still see your screen. So you can start sharing your screen. Now let's say we wanted to watch a video. Now if you want to watch a video and you want the people that you're going to play the video for to hear the audio coming through from the video, you have to do something here different. Um, under the share menu, there's a little button right here that says share computer sound. You have to check that button. If you don't check that button, they're only going to be able to watch your screen. So if you went and went to like YouTube or something and you wanted them to watch a, you know, there's a video embedded in one of your slides or something like that. Um, they're not going to be able to hear any of your computer audio. They can hear your microphone audio, but not your computer audio. So it's a good idea to click that button. Also something else um, is this whiteboard. You can share a whiteboard for everybody if you wanted to, you know, draw on something here. Um, you can, you know, if you wanted to make draw a draw a little deal for people to be able to see, um, it will, it whites out completely and then now you can see the whiteboard. So if you wanted to illustrate something, you can do that. <coughs> Oops. Uh, go ahead and close the whiteboard there. Um, otherwise, for sharing your screen, you can see up here there is a number one. That means I've, it's identified as desktop one. Um, my other desktop has a, a two right here in the corner that identifies so I know which screen they're talking about. Um, there's the whiteboard again and then any of the windows that you want to choose. Like right now I'm recording on OBS so that, that window is open so I can share that window with you if I wanted to. Um, if you are going to be sharing videos um, a lot during your presentation, you can optimize screen share for um, video clip. So if you're going to do a lot of videos, I would check both those buttons. Um, and you don't need to you don't need to stop your share. Like, let's just say, okay, so right now I'm doing this, but I'm like, oh, okay, well, maybe I would like to part, I would like to show, let you hear the audio. I don't have, you don't have to hit stop share and then do the whole thing over again. You just go new share, keep the same option checked and hit okay. And now the whole time I'm doing this, you're seeing these controls, but your participants will not be seeing these controls. They don't see anything that's happening. They don't see the little floating bar up here. That, that's only for you, and this right here is only for you as well. So now when you click share, there's no interruption in your sharing, but there is. Now, um, now your audio will start working um, for them. So those are just some things. like your, the, the controls that you have while you're hosting a video are not going to be, be seen by all. They're just going to be seen by you. So we can go ahead and stop sharing now. Again, all of the things that you have down here, those are not those are not visible by anybody but you. Um, even, even when you change your view so that you can see everybody, um, they have the option to change their view as well. When you change yours, it does not change the view. So one other thing that there's two other things that you can do. If you are using Zoom meeting to help somebody else with their own computer, you can um, click on support. Now, I think that there's a, there's a mismatch between the, my desktop version and the, the, the mobile version, so you can't do that. But if someone else was on a computer and they have their, their computer, this client installed, if you click support, um, you can request to view their screen. You can request to um, type on their computer. You can request to um, take control of their mouse. Um, so you have all those support options if you need to like, you know, work through some settings or something and they're just not getting it, you know, you have the option to take control of their computer, um, which is really nice for people who are in, you know, any sort of support role that you would be able to, you know, be hands on like that. One of the last things here is streaming. 
sometimes you want to go live on YouTube or you want to go live on Facebook. Um, and I feel like Facebook Workplace also um, has the ability to do that. So you have to enable these in your settings. Oh, um, for remote support, you have to enable that as well. Um, so remote support, you have to check that box in your online settings, um, enable remote support. Uh, let's see, Ch -ch -ch -ch. virtual background, you also need to enable that in your settings. And yeah, here's your waiting room option. Oh, right here, allow live streaming meetings. So here's the option, it's under the, it's the bottom of the in meeting advanced settings allow live streaming meetings and you can choose which one you want i had all i had all three of them um, just in case i want to go to workplace i do use workplace by facebook so um but i have facebook workplace youtube so every tuesday i do a meeting that i live stream to uh, a private facebook group just for people um, who are in that that group and that allows me to not have to worry about uploading it later on or recording the meeting and you know doing all of the the after work there I can just live stream live directly into that Facebook group and that's it as soon as I'm done streaming then you know the meeting ends it becomes a recording that people can go back in and watch later at their own time or I can stream live to my YouTube channel that's definitely an option and this is where you will do that when you're actually in zoom when you're actually in the meeting once you've gotten started you click more and then you click on live on YouTube live on Facebook under more here, if you wanted to go live on Facebook, it's going to open up your Facebook and it's going to ask you if you want to go live, you want to choose where to post your live video. So you can share it on your timeline, you can share it on a friend's timeline, share in a group, share an event, or share on a page you manage. So I'm going to go ahead and share it on a page I manage and I'm going to put it on uh, this group, this page here. Uh, I don't have Let's see if it'll even let me. I, have, I don't use that page almost ever. So um, now it's going to prepare for live stream. It's going to open up a live stream um, management page here. And it's going to walk you through the steps here. So again, this is something you'll have to kind of be ready for. And this is what most like most of what people are going to be. This is the live producer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so there's go live now, um, schedule a live video, there's all these things. So share to a page you manage, live video title. So, and this is going to be, um, I'll just call it Zoom hosting. And then you can say something about this um, video. So how to Zoom host. And then you can click, click on go live. And then once you've done all this stuff here, it'll say connecting to your live video and the live video. So now um, for the live video, it looks like it's in this, um, it looks like it's in, what is it, gallery view. It's in gallery view because in here, I have it in gallery view. If I change it to speaker view right here, um, eventually the live video, let's see how it goes. There it goes. So now it's going to be in the speaker view. And if I go back here and I change it to gallery view, now the live video will change back to gallery view. So when you're live, your view is going to matter to what's happening. See, the view that you're looking at matters for the live streaming that you're doing. That's what they're going to see. But it does not matter for participants. Participants are going to see what they want to see because they have the option to choose their view. But for live streaming, you are the one that controls that. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the live video now. Okay, so here's some other things that you can do with your participants. Um, under here, you can um, make a participant your host, make, the, make them the host, or you can make them the co-host. So um, under this little menu here, when you're, uh, when you're in your meeting, you can make someone else the host. If you make them the host, you're gonna allow them to have the all of the power for your um, you'll have you allow them to have all the power for your um, for your meeting the same as you 
um, or no, I'm sorry, you will relinquish yours so you become a participant. Um, if you make them the co-host, they will have all the same powers as you, but you also retain your powers as well. That's muting, inviting people, um, unmute all, mute all, all that stuff. Um, so you can also rename somebody if maybe they just says iPhone on there, but you know it's you know Bob, then you can go ahead and rename Bob so that um, he's aware, everybody's aware of who he is. Um, you can put somebody back in a waiting room. Um, and you can show non-video participants. Um, showing non-video participants, people who don't have their video on, usually it's just a box with their initials or their, um, if they're not, if they don't have an account created, they have an account created, then it'll be their, um, their logo or their, uh, it'll be their profile picture. So now, if you wanted to make someone a co-host, um, you can make the participant a co-host and it'll say participant is now the co-host. Um, and then on my side, on the participant side, you have a bunch of uh, meeting settings and you can share your screen and you can do all of those normal things that the other guy would. So now I, on my, if I'm a participant, I can share my screen. There you go. So now you can see that um, I am, I'm enabling my screen here. You can go on here and you can see my whole entire desktop is being, or my, my phone's desktop is being viewed um, that way. Now I can stop my broadcast and I can go back. And now we're all back to normal. Um, now I can um, make them the host if I want. And if I, if they are, if I make them the host, <clears throat> so the participant is the host now. So now I've lost, you can see I have my raised hand. I can't, I can mute me. That's about it. I've lost all of my privileges here, but I do have a button here to reclaim the host. It still knows that I am um, originally the host, so that option is still available to me. I can reclaim the host, and now I am the host. And it also takes away their co-host abilities as well. So now if I had to leave and the participant was going to continue the meeting, I can make participant the host, change that, and then I can hit leave, and then it just gives me the option to leave the meeting. The meeting will still go on without me. Um, another option you can do, let's just say if you wanted to, you can um, pin the video of that person. So now um, I'll only, even though I'm talking on this camera right here, it's only going to show this guy right here, the participant's video. And again, I believe if you are, if you are streaming live and you pin a video like this, then it's only going to show that person. So now if you are like conducting an interview um, with somebody and you didn't want it to swap back and forth, you just wanted to show them talking, they're going to take over and talk for a little bit, you can you know, pin the video and then they're going to be the only ones talking, they're going to be the only ones viewed at that time. So um, you can unpin the video as well and then it'll swap back and forth to whoever's talking. Or again, in the gallery view, you can see everybody who's talking. So lots of different things, lots of different ways. The view that you're looking at will affect your live streaming. The view that you are looking at will not affect your participants view. So just be aware of that. Um, so let's see, I'm going to reclaim my host privileges back here. So now I'm back the host and participant is not the, not anybody. But if I wanted to, I could put him back in the waiting room. Boop. And now it says that I'm back in the waiting room. That's an option if you wanted to have, you know, a minute you needed to get somebody out or whatever. Um, and then you have to readmit them. So you can remove them um, completely, then they'll basically be disconnected, or you can readmit them back into the meeting. All right. So let's go ahead and end this meeting. I'm going to end this meeting for everybody. End meeting for all. There we go. So what we have here. Um, right up here in this box is going to be um, the normal controls here. Let's real quick talk about scheduling a Zoom call. So under the schedule button here, <clears throat> you have the option to create a scheduled Zoom meeting. So let's just say I'm going to create a host a Zoom meeting, host a Zoom meeting, Zoom meeting. And I want it to be next Thursday um, from 1 to 2 p.m. Okay. Um, 
meeting ID, you should have one generate automatically that's going to give you a random number um, meeting ID, and that's always the best. Um, you can use your personal meeting ID if you'd like. Um, that is uh, available to you as well if you have your own personal meeting ID. Um, because it's a 10 digit number, I just use my business phone number. So that's my personal meeting ID number. It's available to everybody, which is why it's not blurred out. Um, I always require a meeting password. You can set your own password or you can, it'll randomly generate you um, a meeting password for you. I definitely recommend that. That is definitely one way to keep your, your Zoom meeting secure um, by, gen by making sure that you have a password. Um, it keeps random people out. Um, for video, you can say for that meeting, the host of video is going to be on, but let's just say you don't want any participants to have their video on. You can, you can turn it off so that the participants of this meeting will not be able to turn on their video. They will just be watching yours. Um, audio, you can allow them to only dial in via telephone. That means they can only hear you. Um, the audio can only be done over the, over the telephone. They have to dial in. Um, or just computer audio, which means that they have to only connect via the internet. Or you can give them both options so that some people can dial in um, and just listen and some people can use the computer, computer audio, whether it's on their phone or their desktop or whatever. And then the calendar, um, this gives you um, the ability to choose which type of calendar you want to do. Um, I leave mine on Google Calendar because um, while I do use the Apple iCal can, I, I calendar, um, I do, but most of my calendars that I operate on a daily basis are going to be in Go based on Google. So um, it's easier just to send an invite, and I'll show you what happens when you are ready. Um, you choose which calendar you want. So I have my, my main calendar that I use here. You got all this stuff. And here's your advanced options. So this is where you want, if you want to enable waiting room for just this one meeting, then you can click enable waiting room. Um, there's enabled join before host so that people, so if you haven't logged in yet and you haven't started the meeting yet, people can dial in and they can wait in the waiting room. Otherwise, it'll just keep telling that if you have this disabled, um, the join before host, when they go to call in, they'll say the meeting hasn't started yet. Um, and then once the meeting starts, then they'll be putting in the, put it in the waiting room. So I personally, I like to enable join before host so that they can go in, they just wait in the waiting room and it'll be fine. And then I always have mute participants upon entry, so that way um, everybody comes in, they're muted, and we can talk, I can talk freely. You can have people who don't have a Zoom account, this right here, this only authenticated users, sign into Zoom. So if you have this check that only people who have registered with Zoom and created an account are, are able to um, join your meeting, if you leave that unchecked, then anybody can click the link. If they get the invitation, they can click the link and it'll open up Zoom or prompt them to download Zoom. It'll get them into the meeting and all they have to do is put in their name and everything's good to go. Um, and then you can obviously, and then you can also set for your meeting to automatically record on the local computer. So as soon as this meeting starts, if I check this box, as soon as the meeting starts and I log in and I start the meeting, boom, the meeting's gonna start recording and I don't have to worry about doing it because I'm like, oh yeah, this is definitely what I'm gonna want recorded. So I'll do that. And then if you have alternative hosts, if you, you, you want, you can assign someone via email um, as, uh, to be an alternative host if you cannot start your meeting. So let's go ahead and click Schedule. And what this is going to do is this is going to open up my um, calendar. And I have to give Zoom access to my calendar so that they can go ahead and it's going to create an invite. Now I can add guests to this and I can include um, you know, anybody else that I want. So now I can have all three of these guests here and it says notification. It includes the Zoom link with the password, everything. It includes the entire Zoom in, um, invitation. And then as soon as I hit save, it's going to send out the email invites to my guests and say, hey, here's a calendar invite so that you can um, participate in the Zoom call. Now that's just for a one-time meeting. Let's say you want to set up a meeting for every single week, right? So I want to schedule a Zoom meeting for um, a recurring meeting, Zoom meeting. And it's going to be, let's just say Tuesdays at 10 a.m., which is something that I do. I do a, week, I do a weekly meeting at 10 a.m. And it's going to go from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. for an hour. I'm going to click this button right here. It says recurring meeting. And it's going to give you a reminder 
to check recurring re or repeat in your calendar invitations. So again, we'll go through all the same, it's the exact same setup as everything else. Google Calendar, Advanced, Enable Waiting Room, Join Before Host, Mute Participants, Automatically Record. I don't like to have people sign in. Um, and I'm going to say boom. So there's going to schedule and it's going to bring you through the same thing. Here is, here it is. Now, under the only thing that you have to change is this, does not repeat. You're going to change this weekly on Tuesday. So now it's going to create a re repeating weekly every week at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. call. You have to make sure that, that the, the, the check mark is set up on both Zoom and in your meeting because if you do it this way here, this meeting password and ID is only going to be good for one meeting. As soon as that meeting happens, it's, it's done. It's spent. This way, this meeting and password is good every single week. And that's the difference between uh, recurring and non-recurring. And the same thing, you just add guests. You can add Brian. I'm going to go there and I'm going to add another Brian. I'm going to go there and I'm going to add another Brian. And we're going to go there. So now all of my guests are going to be invited to a weekly reoccurring Zoom meeting with that link and it'll show up on their calendar. And all I have to do is every week click on that link and it's good to go. And I am going to leave both of these because I do not need either one of these. So that's it. Now, now you're like, well, where did my reoccurring meeting go? How do I, how do I see that in here? Boop, boop, under here, under meetings. Here's my host of Zoom meeting, Zoom meeting from one to two. I can start the meeting. I can copy the invitation, I can edit or delete it, or I can even join it from a different room. So this one's set up for Thursday, May 28th. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that meeting because I don't need to. And you can recover the meeting within seven days, which is nice. So I'll delete that. Now under recurring, you can see here I have my recurring meeting, Zoom meeting. This will happen every week. Oops, and I hit start. So even though it wasn't supposed to happen for um, a few days, you can still start the meeting now. I'm going to end the meeting for all. Because I had it set up to record, it recorded that one little bit. So we don't have to worry about that. Now it's going to convert, and there's my five seconds worth of video. There. Um, I do have a class coming up here in just a second. So, okay. So that is that, and now my recurring meeting is still down there, and now I have options. I can copy the invitation, um, so it's copied, so now I can go into my email and I can send out an invitation to more people. Um, I can edit this meeting, and then I can go in here and make a password not required, or change the calendar, or you know whatever I want to do, advanced options. I don't have to automatically record the meeting. So those are all saved, and then this is if you're going, it's going to reopen this um, recurring calendar invite because if you change something um, but nothing else should nothing should be changed so you don't really need to send that out if you were to send if you were to change the date and time you'd have to resend out the calendar invitation so that everybody was aware of what's happening but since I don't really need this I'm gonna go ahead and delete this meeting now every time I delete a meeting I am getting an email from zoom it just says hi you've successfully deleted the below meeting blah blah blah, blah. It gives me all the information so in case I do actually need it again so that's it, finally. That's all of Zoom. That's, that, that's how to use those things. It's gonna take a little bit of practice for you to you know, get a used to controlling the, the meetings and that sort of thing, but um, I feel like this should give you a very solid foundation on how to move forward to create your own awesome Zoom meetings, host trainings, do some maybe some one-on-one -on -one support, whatever it is that you need to do. Maybe you just wanna connect with your family and your friends and you just wanna you know, spend 30 minutes talking with your with your family all across the country. Um, regardless of what you want to do, that is how you're going to do it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.